So if you saw my part one to this video, you will know that I had such a ugh, dilemma of what to take to Cropaganza with me. I agonized over it. I talked to friends about it. I posted on Instagram about it. I talked to my friends again about it. I fretted more over it. And finally I packed. <laughs> so, I will link that video in the description below. So what I'm going to do now is do a part two to that video. And this is called Packing for Cropaganza Part Two, Things I Learned. I have a list of things that I learned from my packing at Copaganza. These are, there's probably a lot, but these are the four main things that I want to cover. Um, like I said, I have the, I'll link the other one in the description below. But if you saw my video, um, be called Things I Learned from Attending My First Copaganza, and I'll link that video below too. There's, some of these things might kind of fold over to each other because I think some of the things that I learned could apply to the packing portion. So I'm sorry if some of these overlap, but I think they're equally important from what I've learned that will fall over into my packing and how I pack for future crops and events. So here we go. So number one is make a checklist. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I think I forgot almost every single cord that I needed. Um, so, my thoughts, and I thought about this a lot since, since the weekend, um, if you always, if you go to a crop or you go on a trip, I think this could be like, this could be like for anything, if you have a basic set of things that you take, like you're always going to take paper, adhesive, scissors, your cricket, your computer, your tablet, etc. Print a list and laminate it. Whether you laminate it at home, whether you stick it between two pieces of contact paper, whether you take it to your local office supply store and pay to have it laminated, and have a generic list with cords. Make sure cords are on there. Uh, the things that you will need for whatever it is that you're packing for, whether it's a crop, whether it's vacation, that way you have a list that you can go from and you aren't forgetting anything and you aren't feeling like either you're underpacking or you're overpacking. Um, a number two, and this is, woo, sorry guys, this is more of a personal thing. Um, a tote bag for my Cricut would be awesome, but it's not necessary. Um, I got a lot of really weird looks um, when I was hauling stuff in, and that's because I had a laundry basket. I don't own one of the special bags for carting the Cricut, and so I have a laundry basket that my Cricut will actually fit in. It fits in diagonally, and I know it fits in there because when I've, like, went to other, like, I've taken it over to my parents to do some crafting and whatnot, I put it in there and I know it fits. So I'm like, I'm using this again. Plus I can like stick things in and around it and have, you know, some things contained. A Cricut tote bag, while great, because I saw a lot of people had them. Or they had the rolling accessory bag that you can like put iris cases and vinyl and all kinds of things in. I'm re actually really happy with my laundry basket and here's why. I'm sorry, I've got an itch in my nose. Um, I can, like I said earlier, I can tuck things in and around my Cricut. I can maybe, if I wanted to put a blanket over my Cricut, um, I'm, I'm good because I can make sure that it's protected and safe and I've got the space around it. Unlike the tote bag for it that really it sits straight down in it and it pulls back out. It would have no extra space for anything. Number three, I think, is going to be a big one, especially for the February crop, because we will be just getting back from our December, January vacation to Walt Disney World, is knowing the products in advance will help with the packing. One of the things that made packing for this crop so hard was I really didn't know what I was going to be working on, because I don't have any pictures to work on. I was working on swap pieces for two different groups, 
And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm going to make. I don't, I don't really, I didn't really have anything in my head that I particularly was going to make. So I knew I needed some, pretty much the rain, the gauntlet of colors, the gauntlet of everything. But I think when I go in February or to Cropaganza, I will have a better idea of what I'll be working on because I will print, so I will print a dedicated pictures for that event. I will make sure and have paper, I will have my adhesives, I'll have my scissors glue, I will make a checklist and have it laminated, like, from number one. Um, so, like, and my notes that I wrote to myself were, I took lots of paper and I didn't use a third of the papers that I took. I actually ended up needing colors I didn't have and ended up paying the crop prices for the paper that I didn't have on hand. Now. I'm not going to be able to take every piece of paper and every color and every glitter format that there possibly could be. It's not logical for a three-day crop. I don't even think if I was going for a week, it would be logical to take all the paper that I have and potentially maybe that I did take. Um, but I think knowing what my projects are going to be in advance will really help with the packing and organization portion going forward. And number four is a wagon to haul everything is a must, especially if you're unloading on your own. Um, a lot of the ladies had those collapsible wagons that you can get at like Walmart that you see parents hauling their kids around in, like at the park or the zoo. And I'm like, you ladies are a genius because um, dad helped me haul everything into the hotel. It wasn't quite time that we could get in yet. Um, so we sat everything down at one spot. Then a little bit before nine o'clock, I moved it all to another spot. And then once we could get in, I had to then carry that again to my seat where a wagon would have been here. Okay, let's open the wagon. Let's set everything in there. Let's roll it in and let's get going. You know, it would have been so much simpler. So that is on my list of things that I do think I will be very helpful for the upcoming crop. And they're nice because they can condense down. I can leave it in our room. I don't have to worry about it taking up space or, or like stepping in it and rolling through the wall or some random thing like that. And you've all met me at this point, like through the videos, you know I'm a pretty big klutz. And I would do something like that. Like I'd injure myself greatly and then Jess wouldn't want to come play with me anymore. And then I'd be sad. Then you'd get lots of sad videos in this vlog. I don't want to have said videos. Okay, enough being sad. <laughs> I think, I, um, so that's it for the thing, packing part two. Um, there might be a part three. I don't know. I think I've covered about everything that regarding packing that I possibly could without boring you guys to death. So with that, I'm going to end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please share with your friends and family. Um, please subscribe, hit the bell, like the video so you know when all, the bell will give you all the notifications for upcoming videos, which are going to be awesome. Um, if you don't know or haven't seen our Instagram, I will be participating in Vlogtober, which means that there will be a brand new video every day in the month of October, so you don't want to miss that, so definitely make sure to hit that notifications and the bell. And thank you so much for watching the video. And with that, we'll see you in the theme park.